Holy cow, you really explodes in your mouth. It's like an atomic bomb of marshmallow. We are at Tokyo Station, one of the busiest train stations in Japan with over 3,000 trains passing through daily carrying more than 400,000 passengers. And behind me is the main building, the red brick building called Marunouchi Honya. And we are here, obviously not to travel. We are here to eat because there's tons of food under this concrete slab. Let's go. Now, there are many levels to Tokyo Station selling lots of stuff, souvenirs, items, a lot of eateries and all sorts of cute stuff like cartoon anime stuff. But today we are just going to explore a very small part of Tokyo Station. We are at this street called Ichibangai, it means First Avenue and we are heading right down to the food section. There's this ramen street where we are going to have our breakfast. I think it's a good time for us to start the day with a hot bowl of ramen or more specifically, Sukemen. There's this place that I always go to whenever I'm in Tokyo Station and it's called Rokurinsha. It's right ahead. Guys, it's now about 11 and we're in the queue for Rokurinsha. There's quite a long queue. So I think the lunch crowd is coming and is packing up the place. What I like about this queue line is that they have these markers on the floor telling you how much you have to wait. Now, as you already know, I haven't been here in three years, so I hope it's still as good as remember it to be. This used to be like the baseline for sukemen for me. This is what a proper sukemen should taste like. And anyone who hasn't tried sukemen before, I'll tell them to start with Roku Richa first before moving up the ranks. So I'm super excited. Let's quickly sit and order our sukemen. Sukemen, the Tokyo invention, and if I'm not mistaken, is created uh, by Taisho Ken, by Mr. Yamagishi. We have got curly noodles, fairly thick, got an egg on the side. These noodles look pretty nice. They look very loosely thrown on, very messy. And on this bowl of broth, I've got a special one with these are, uh, I think they call it pork floss on top, some fish cake, and this viscous looking broth with a slice of char siu right at the side. Without further ado, let us start by dipping the noodles first. This is a dipping noodle, that's what Superman means. And mix it up real nice. Let's go. Mm. Oh, thick chewy noodles. See this? These are basically like bits of the wheat of this noodle because it's a wheat noodle, isn't it? It's basically ramen. And this is thick, not the thickest in terms of sukemen, but I love it. The chewiness is just, just right, there's a nice bounce. And the dipping broth is viscous, packed full of umami, full of flavor, it's salty, it's savory, it's meaty. Mm. When I sniff it, I actually smell niboshi, dried baby sardines. Because the broth is made from a mixture of pork, chicken, and I think dried fish as well. However, the flavor is mainly of pork. You can tell the depth of the combination of different meats, different protein sources in this bowl. There's even a very slight hint of yuzu. Mm. <laughs> Sorry guys, I broke the char siu. Chashu is soft and tender, melty fats. Chashu is very marinated as well. And because it's been sitting in the broth for so long, it has soaked up all the umami, the saltiness. Very good, very well done, Chashu. I think they are on point today. Wow. <laughs> Usually it's not this good, I'll be honest. Today is very on point. Okay, I think we need to move on to the egg now. Let's take a look at the egg, see if they did it perfectly. This is a ajitama, which is soy sauce deep egg. Ooh, perfectly done. Runny egg yolk, beautifully orange. Mm. Oh, this is one good one. Well marinated in soy sauce. The soy sauce flavor, the mixture and complexity of soy sauce, mirin, maybe some sake. Perfectly done, Ajitama. Very well done. This is definitely what a proper sukeme should taste like. If you want to try sukeme, you have not tried it before. 
this is the start to a good bowl of sukeme. This is what we call the soup wari, where your leftover dipping broth, you ask them to add some stock onto it, and then you drink it like a soup. Mm. So, washes all the flavors down. Alright guys, just finished our brunch, I guess, and the queue literally has just doubled. Look at this. The queue has just doubled. The lunch crowd is really here now. Alright, we have done the savory stuff. Let's move on to have maybe some dessert. Sweet stuff! Sweet stuff. <laughs> We're at Mihashi, a traditional Japanese dessert shop with a history of I think more than 70 years, especially known for their amits, which we have ordered. We will show you that traditional dessert in a bit. We have also gotten a drink, which is a hojicha. Can't wait for them to arrive. <laughs> Alright, the amits is here. Obviously, we didn't get the original basic amits because we have shown that in our mini series. What we got here is a special one. It comes with a side of shiratama, which is white dango, and also with a vanilla ice cream. The rest of the stuff are what is originally in the amits. Basically, you have got mikan, yuhi, which is a soft rice flour, azuki bean paste. I don't know if you can still see the aga on the other side, made from red algae, and you have got some red peas. So, without further ado, I'm going to dig right in, try to get a bit of the bean paste together with the aga because I've got a really small spoon so we can get everything in one bite. The ice cream is definitely vanilla ice cream, it's a soft serve, melts really quickly. It's basically sweet. I mean, it's light, it's sweet. It's a very decent ice cream, and I could still taste that light flavor of the agar. I'll call it the algae flavor, but not in a bad way, in a very, very good way. I love it, it's very high quality. And the bean paste is smooth. It's sweet. You can taste a little bit of grittiness, but it's definitely koshian, which is the smooth type, not the suguan. There are no bean peels in that. Mm -hmm. oh. I already know I would definitely love the dango. It's so soft and chewy. The dango is very good, it's sticky. The fragrance is insane. You could taste that natural flavor of rice flour. That fragrance. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't notice I might have made a mistake. I should have ordered the vanilla ice cream because now the flavor of the vanilla ice cream has completely engulfed the entire amid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very quickly eat up the ice cream first. Oh. It's actually really smooth. Mm. It's a very good soft serve, I can say. Okay, now that we have removed the white stuff, let's hope we could get a better taste of the remainder of the flavors. For example, that brown sugar, which I'm eagerly trying to get. Mm. 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 Now I can taste the brown sugar. It's sweet, but there seems to be a form of caramelized flavor from within the brown sugar. It has got depth in it. It is very addictive brown sugar but it does taste rather sweet and I can really taste the algae now. It really stands out with that sweetness of the flavor of algae and it's bouncy. It's got a nice snap to it. It's rather snappy. Mm. The mikan. You can tell it's canned mikan where it's tart with some sweetness and it sort of acts like a palate cleanser in a way because this is a rather sweet dish so it washes away the sweetness. Mm. What about the yuhi? Mm. Again, very sticky, soft, chewy, not delicately. The powdered rice flour on top gives you the fragrance, the sweet, 
and even that red pea gives you the additional texture as well, the nice snappiness to it. This is a very interesting bowl of dessert. It's sort of like a treasure bowl, isn't it? Because you've got such a small spoon, you can't fit all the ingredients in one go. So you're gonna pick like maybe one or two or maybe three ingredients in one bite and get different textures and different flavors. Definitely a very, very well done dessert. Done with the sweet stuff, done with the sukemen. And actually we are quite full right now. Sometimes I wonder how the other food vloggers manage to eat so much food in one day. Mad respect to the other food vloggers. But I'm almost done. However, every time I visit Tokyo Station, I always visit three shops. Two of them I've shown to you. There's another shop that I must visit today even though I'm full. It is also a dessert shop in a way. We are now at Sentry PR, food specialist store. They are famous with their food cafe and they have history nearly 200 years. We have ordered marshmallow cafe, which is very expensive and hope it will be taste very good. My marshmallow cafe is here. There is a lot of ripe melon and with the cream on the top and the bottom. This, I think, is a melon sorbet. So let's try it. The melons is very juicy and very sweet and the texture is like spongy so when you bite the melon the juicy and the sweetness is explode in your mouth. The bottom is vanilla ice cream with Shantiy cream. Ultimately the melon is very juicy and sweet. It's paired well with the Shantiy cream and the ice cream. Oops. Let's not forget the sorbet. Mm. Yeah. The sorbet is sweet, but it tastes like not very natural. Feel like the melon syrup. Mm. <laughs> Holy cow. The way it explodes in your mouth. It's like an atomic bomb of musk melon. And I think. There's yogurt underneath. Mm. Mm. Affirmative, I think it's yogurt. The bottom layer is yogurt. And you've got shanty cream. And you've got vanilla ice cream. And you've got the chemical tasting sorbet, unfortunately. A really good marshmallow. Alright, I guess I'm gonna finish this up. And then we will see you later for playing time. Hey guys, we are having some blue bottle coffee, a pretty expensive coffee, but I would say it's pretty delicious. Now, let's talk about the fruits that we have had at Tokyo Station, starting with Rukurisha, the sukemen. There's a hearty bowl of sukemen. The noodle is thick, chewy, bouncy, mm. whiskers dipping soup with a good depth of pork, chicken, and dry fish umami. Slurring the noodle is rather additive. The texture of the noodles get this airy type. The flavour is rich and salty but not to the point where it becomes cloyed and a touch of yuzu mixed into the broth helps cut down that richness. Ingredients are well prepared too with well marinated melt in your mouth chashu with a perfectly boiled ajitama with its golden licky yolk peeking right back at you as you break it open. I remember they were rather decent 3 years ago but today everything lined up perfectly for my bowl. It was decadent. Rokurisha sukemen really should be the standard for all sukemen. The only way it could have been better is if it is refined in all aspects bit by bit. For example, a broth with even more depth than it already has and noodles that are even bouncier and chewier than they already are. That said, Rokurisha is also inconsistent by the bowl. Yeah. For my bowl, it was perfect. The flavours were amazing. But for Quest's bowl, it was overly salty, right? Mm. Yeah. So if you were to take my bowl into consideration, Rokurisha scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, but for Quetz bowl, it will only score at most an okay on the gourmet plate. But let's take my bowl into consideration, which means it's some high quality sukemen right there. This is definitely a spot that we will recommend for sukemen when you visit Tokyo Station, and they are also open real early as well. So it's a great way to fill you for your daily Tokyo Station tour. Now on 
to the next spot, Nihashi. Yeah, they are Amits. A rather traditional, a bit delicious dessert. But it is also a very complicated spot for her to score. Let me explain. All the ingredients are really top notch. From the bouncy, bitey agar, soft, pillowy yuhi, intoxicating, chewy shiratama, snappy red peas, to the smooth, delicate anko, blanketed by the caramelly brown sugar. Mm. Each bite provides a different combination of flavors and texture, all thanks to the tiny spoon that disallows greed. Now, on to the complicated part. We did find that the brown sugar amount could be too generous, causing quite a few spoonfuls to be overloaded with sweetness. That said, the dish is served refillable with green tea, which helps wash down all that sweetness. So here's our thought. This dish should be savoured slowly with green tea. A bite of a certain spoonful of the amits and then a sip of the green tea. Savour it, taste the ingredients, slowly feel them rolling in your mouth. And with that, the sweetness will be manageable. And Mihashi scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means it is some high quality amits right there. Absolutely recommend it if you're in Tokyo Station again. It's a really, really, really nice mm -hmm. dessert, and you'll go perfectly after you have that sukeman. Alright, guys, the final spot, Sendikia. They are absolutely a food specialist. Mm. The marshmallow was a juicy bowl. The combination of the sweetness from the marshmallow, the light airy chandelier, the creamy ice cream, and the lightly tangy yogurt create the perfect harmonization of flavor. Aside from the sobe, we do not talk about that chemically tasting thing. It's the unwanted child of the family, so let's not, let's not talk about it. Ultimately, the marshmallow really carried this dish. The texture, sweetness, and juiciness is on a class of its own. And the other ingredients are of high quality as well, but they act merely as an accompaniment to highlight the strength of the marshmallow. And with that being said, Sammy Gia score one plate on the combi plate, which means it is some high quality marshmallow perfect with princess of genius, thanks to the crazy tasting marshmallow. Aside from the sobe, don't <laughs> eat the sobe. The chemical sobe. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it, a day of eating in Tokyo Station and showing you some of Tokyo Station's stuff. And I think we had a lot of fun, I hope you guys had as well. Hopefully you have enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Till it again next week in Tokyo. Bye!